The Quran has 10 qiraat, which are all confirmed and all from Allah, and they are all His words. So, as an example, in Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah has revealed this ayah as according to the riwayah of Hafs an Asim, but also according to the riwayah of Warsh an Nafi' and many others. And these little variations are present in the rest of the surah, and they occur across the ten qiraat in almost every surah of the Quran. But let's say I want to recite Al-Fatiha according to the riwayah of Hafs an Asim, but I want to say this specific word according to the riwayah of Warsh an Nafi'. Maliki Yawmiddin. And then I continue the rest of the surah according to the riwayah of Hafs. Would that be possible? Or in other words, are we allowed to switch from one riwayah to another in the same recitation or in the same surah? And the short answer is yes, except in some cases. But generally, yes, it is permissible since it is all Allah's words. But scholars of Islam have given a more detailed answer so that you know what to avoid and how to do it properly. Scholars of Islam made a distinction between two situations. The first is reciting in prayer. The second is reciting for yourself. As for the first situation, if you lead other Muslims in prayer, it is still allowed to switch between qiraat or riwayat, but that doesn't mean you should, because it really depends on the situation and it is very conditional. So if you lead a group of people who know about the Qur'an and the Qira'at, and they are familiar with the variations you are using in your recitation, then that should not be a problem. But in most cases, if you lead others in prayer, you don't really know each and every one of them. And in that case, if you read the Qur'an in a way that is not familiar to them, it will probably cause confusion, anger, and even in some cases hostility or even worse that they would claim that what you read is not Qur'an, out of ignorance, which is a very serious thing to say. So to avoid all of this, it is better to stick to the riwayah that is familiar to the listeners. So it is permissible, but most of the time it is better to be avoided. And for the second situation, if you recite to yourself, it should not be a problem to switch and mix between the different riwayat, so, if you want to read the entire Fatiha according to the riwayah of Hafs an Asim, but the word Malik, you want to read it as Malik, or read the word Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim with Sin instead of Sad, which is the riwayah of Qumbul and Ruwais. That is all permissible, since all of this is from Allah and it is all Qur'an, so it should not be a problem insha'Allah. However, in certain situations, combining certain variations is not possible, and so these switches must not be made. That's why most scholars have specified that these switches may not occur within the same ayah or the same series of the related ayat, because if you do, there is a chance that the structure of the ayah or the surah would not grammatically make sense anymore. So, you can't consider Al-Basmala as the first ayah of Surah Al-Fatiha, according to the riwayah of Hafs an Asim, and at the same time consider Ghayr al-Maghdubi alayhim as a separate ayah, because this way Al-Fatiha is now eight ayat, and that can't be the case, it must be seven which is something that we explained in this lesson. So check it out if you haven't done that already. And even more so in an example like this. When 
قالوا لئن لم يرحمنا ربنا ويغفر لنا لنكونن من الخاسرين. This was the رواية of حفص عاصم. But in the قراءة of الكسائي, he read the same ayah like that. ولما سقط في أيديهم ورأوا أنهم قد ضلوا قالوا قالوا لئن لم ترحمنا ربنا وتغفر لنا لنكونن من الخاسرين here we can clearly see the difference. The Qira'a of al kasai the words of the children of Israel, are addressed to Allah directly. لَإِن لَمْ تَرْحَمْنَا رَبَّنَا While in the Qira'a of Asim, it is read as a conditional sentence and not addressed directly to Allah. In this case, we can't take a part of the Qira'a of Asim, and then combine it with the Qira'a of al kasai and say لَإِن لَمْ يَرْحَمْنَا رَبَّنَا وَتَغْفِرْ لَنَا or any other variation of the kind. If you combine the Qira'at like that, the sentence will make no sense and it will be grammatically wrong. And in that case, combining or switching the Qira'at may not happen and should just stick to one variation. Similarly, in this ayah, فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ And Ibn Kathir read this ayah as follows. فَتَلَقَّى آدَمَ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٌ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ In the Qira'a of Asim, the word Adam is the subject, fa'il, and that's why it has dhamm. And the word kalimat is the object, and that's why it is in the state of nasb, and it has kasra. But in the Qira'a of Ibn Kathir, the word Adam is the object, and it is in the state of nasb. But the word kalimat is the subject, and it has dhamm. So if you read Adam with dhamm, and then you switched and read kalimat with dhamm as well, the sentence will have two subjects, which doesn't make any sense. And the same thing will happen if you read both words in nasb state. So, if switching between riwayat changes or ruins the meaning of the ayah, it must not be done. Otherwise, if you know what you're reciting, you may choose and switch between the riwayat. But now you might be wondering, if we can pick and choose, then why are there 10 qira'at named after the qira'a master? We could just make our own qira'a. Well, it is true that each Qira'a master made certain choices in the Qira'a named after them. And while you too may switch and make certain choices in your recitation, these 10 Qira'at represent a standard that you can follow without worrying about changing the meaning or saying something that you should not be saying. That is why it is always better to stick to the standard of the 10 Qira'at and respect the Qira'at as they are. So, in conclusion, switching between qira'at is permissible in every situation. However, if you are in prayer, it is highly recommended that you do not do so, and that you read using the familiar riwayah at that place. If you are reading to yourself, however, you may switch between the riwayat of the Qur'an, since they are all from Allah and they are revealed from Allah. And generally, whether in prayer or not, you must not switch within the same ayah or within ayat that depend on each other in meaning to avoid changing the meaning of the Qur'an. And finally, if you want to learn more information about the riwayat, the qira'at, or the seven ahraf of the Qur'an, 
then make sure to have watched this lesson. It is very important. Thanks for watching. If you want to start your journey to learn the Tajweed of the Quran, you can click on this link. And if you want to understand the Quran in Arabic, then you should click on that link. And finally, I hope you've learned something new today, and I will see you next time.